welcome to the Movie Throne. I'm your host, the one and only King Kansas, here to bring you another Theater 31 movie review. Sorry, guys, I'm a little fidgety because, as you can see over my shoulders, it's showing clips on the title page or the title menu screen for Midsommar. Oh, my God. Like, literally, I'm telling you, it's going to make you crawl some of the stuff that you see in the last little bit of this film. Incredible. But anyways, like always, Theater 31 reviews, I do a quick non-spoiler, and then I give you a spoiler review on my final thoughts on the movie I just watched. So in this case, it's Midsummer. It's released by A24 Films. It was it came out July 3rd, 2019 here in the States or North America, and I think a little bit earlier in Europe, especially Sweden, because it does kind of like take place in Sweden a little bit. It's about two hours and 15 minutes long something like that um it's directed by ari aster stars florence Pugh, jack rayner if you don't know who that is it's the young boyfriend or the boyfriend of that chick in transformers age of extinction the girl who plays the daughter her boyfriend that's him william jackson harper uh william poulter alova torchia archie medquay i hope i pronounced that right and Julia Ragnarsson. Oh, there's trust me. There's a whole bunch of other well unknown actresses and actors that did a good job in this. But that's the main cast. I'm telling you right now. Wow. Okay. Going in had low expectations. Okay, so I didn't expect much from it. All I knew that it's some sort of uh, suspense thriller, possibly horror. That you're gonna see some of those elements in here because I watched the trailer going in and I'm like, okay. Let's pick this up and see uh, what's going on. Just in case, guys, let me show you. That's the Blu-ray, if you guys can see it. Florence Pugh on the cover. It's uh, my second girlfriend crush after Scarlett Joe, and she's in the Black Widow film, right? And if you haven't watched a little film called Fighting with the Family, go watch it. That's a movie that she did a pretty damn good job. Anyways, non-spoiler. What were my thoughts? Overall, good film. It's an indie type film. It's not a blockbuster. So if you expect to see, get something spectacular out of this, you're not going to be getting it in this movie, guys. It's your basic story from point A to point B. Somewhat predictable. You pretty much know, like any of these films here, that it starts off either with something shocking or something gradually into something shocking. You know, and that's how this one starts off. At the beginning, something tragic happens to Florence Pugh's character which kind of sets her off a little bit. And then you meet her boyfriend, played by uh, Mr. Rayner there himself. Can't remember his, uh, Jack Rayner. Uh, he's like on the verge of kind of like breaking up with her because she's kind of girlfriend who's a little bit clingy and needy. And you know, with the being egged on by his friends to kind of break up with her, hey listen, for every little small thing, she's gonna drive you crazy kind of thing, right? So something happens, they still stay together and then they plan a trip to Europe, and that's where they travel over there to kind of get away from everything, hopefully get Florence Pugh's character to kind of like, you know, forget about all the bad stuff that's happened in her life. And then they go to this place that seems wonderful at the beginning. And then, like always, there's a plot twist. When it's too perfect, you know the shit's going to go down. And trust me, stuff slowly goes down uh, from people disappearing to uh, wondering what's going on, why are they doing this and why are they doing that kind of thing, right? I can't reveal too much now because it's gonna ruin the film. And then, yeah, it slowly builds up to the conclusion. The last 15, 20 minutes are just jaw dropping. The shock value is pretty much what, what you get. Certain things are uncovered. And at the end, you're thinking one thing that someone's gonna probably bite the big one and then it turns out to be something totally different and like I said, it was predictable. Like I knew once I seen that little town or little village or festival with all those people wearing the white dress that you can see in the back, I'm thinking cult. That's what I'm thinking. So with cults, might seem good on the outside and then shit goes bad. So that's it. So overall final thoughts, I think you guys should still check it out. Do I think all you guys will like it? No, this is not for everybody. Like for me, because Florence Pugh's in it, it was tolerable. It was decent. I liked it. I'm not going to say I loved it so I can give you two thumbs up. Go check this out. You're not going to get that from me. But I say, you know what, on a Sunday afternoon or Saturday, 
pop this in. It's only like two hours long, and it's a good movie. It's an indie film. That's what it was. It got critically acclaimed and all this stuff from all the festivals that are going on there, TIFF and whatever. I can keep on going on and on cans and all that stuff, but check it out. Cast is good. They did a good job acting. I think you guys are going to like it. Okay. Spoiler. My God. So like I said, low expectations going in. The beginning, it opens up with Florence Pugh's character kind of like freaking out over the fact that she can't get a hold of her sister. Her sister, for some reason, is not answering her phone calls, emails, you name it, the work. She's thinking the worst. And you know what? She has every reason to think of the worst. So anyway, she's calling her boyfriend who's on the verge of breaking up with her because she's too controlling, calling for every stupid little thing, being egged on by his friends, break up with her, break up with her. She's nothing but trouble. You can do better, et cetera, et cetera. She's driving you crazy. You're not going to live properly. So what happens? She ends up calling. You can hear in her voice. She's a little upset at the beginning. And then she hangs up. And then I think hours later, she does find out the worst. Her sister ends up uh, committing suicide. She apparently turned the cars on in her house, put the exhaust pipe right to her room, right to her mouth, and she died of carbon monoxide poisoning. She finds out. She flips out. She goes mental. Then story picks up a couple of maybe months later is what I'm thinking. She's still trying to recover from it. She's still with her boyfriend. The boyfriend and his buddies are still planning this trip. There's this weird guy in their group that, you know, lives in Sweden. He goes, let's go back and let's take a trip to Sweden and go to this festival. I think you guys can use getting away from everything, especially that guy with his girlfriend, Florence Pugh's character. But then he ends up inviting her. So they all go together. So they do so. They go. They land in Nor uh, sorry in uh, Sweden, you know, wondering, oh, this is cool. This is relaxing, you know. Even she thinks it's good for her. They meet up with a bunch of people in the somewhere in the middle of the field of nowhere. I don't even know where the hell. It's about four hours from where they landed in Sweden at the airport. And first thing they do is get high with marsh, mushrooms. She didn't want to take anything because she's not into that shit, you know, which good for you. Don't give in to peer, peer pressure. But uh, she ends up taking something and then she starts to hallucinate and shit. And then, of course, with, when you do shrooms, apparently you're either going to have a a very relaxing experience or you're going to get paranoid as hell that's what happens she starts to run off and then she clunks out wakes up the next morning she's like whoa is it morning because in sweden apparently this time there's only like two hours of uh, nighttime and it's daylight the whole time so they end up all waking up they go together on the journey they end up going to this festival this village with people literally I, when you first go there it's like wow so peaceful and then you're looking at the same time so damn weird. Everybody's dressing and acting a certain way. You can see from the pictures behind me there. You're in awe, right? So it's like, oh, this is so nice. You know, this is what we really need. And like everything, guys, what seems to be perfect, it ain't. Secrets are to be discovered. And boy, when shit goes down, it goes down. So they start off slowly. And of course, they have this uh, friend there, this black friend, amazing actor. He... Uh, Starts to investigate. He wants to take pictures of what they believe in and all this crap. And he's solving basically the truth of this place going, something's wrong. So he slowly unravels stuff. One of his friends, the troublemaker, he ends up meeting this girl. And then he disappears at dinner. And so you know what happened to him. He's kind of like totally disappeared. They're saying that he left, which is bullshit. Then there was this another couple, same damn thing. Oh, he left, but why would he leave his girlfriend behind kind of thing? So... You're slowly putting the picture, guys, that uh, people are disappearing here. And what the hell is the reason, right? And like I said, with me, once I see this, I'm thinking cult. There's something up. Reminds me of the village that it's nice and whatever the crap. And then shit goes down and it goes down big. So anyways, it does. So then the uh, black guy ends up disappearing because he was trying to investigate. or take. He sneaks to get pictures and then he gets hit in the head by some creep wearing... This other guy's face, the friend that disappeared, which you're like, oh, okay, here we go. Something's going on. Cannibals or something, man. Something's going on. You know, me, I'm thinking they're either eating these people or they're using their, I guess, body for like fertilizer. Trust me, I've, I've seen so many movies. I'm like, that's what they're doing. And King was right. Trust me. But anyways, so that's what keeps on going. So they keep on going. One by one, they disappear. And then it leads to Florence Pugh's and Jack Rainier's character, the last being thing. So she ends up waking up. They're wondering where their friends are. They don't want to get accused of what their friend's stealing the book because they're getting accused left, right, and center that like, you guys 
are doing something to our village. What the hell's going on? You know, like outsiders, etc. You know how it is that angle. So then, no, we're not. No, we're not. So anyway, so they end up drinking this shit, which is more drugs in there, natural, dandelions, and who knows whatever else there. So she starts starting seeding shit. Then she ends up doing. There's this festival that goes on that every midsummer. There's like every ninety years or something. They do some sort of ritual to kind of appease the gods for giving them what they have and all this shit, which is bull crap. It never is that easy. So she ends up dancing, whatever, and she ends up winning this damn thing. She wins this, I want to call it Miss May Queen bullshit thing, which is like, what the hell are they up to? I'm thinking, all oh, damn, she's dead. They're going to sacrifice her to the gods or whoever the hell they believe in in order to uh, appease the gods and be, there you go, right? Now, her boyfriend's around too, and then I'm telling you, there's one scene that her boyfriend, this girl, has it in for him, and then... He gets kind of lured off to this house that you're not supposed to go in. And there's a whole bunch of naked women pretty much in there. And you can only imagine what goes down there. You know, she wants to have a kid. I'll leave it at that, guys. You can watch the movie for yourself and witness that. And her chanting and all this shit. Meanwhile, she's getting back from blessing the soil and whatever the crap it is. And all the people eating at this table and shit. They take her off. She discovers when she comes back that her boyfriend is doing this act with these other girl this other girl and women watching so she freaks out next thing you know they're screaming then she passes out i guess she comes to she has a whole bunch of flowers covered from head to toe you don't even see any body part besides her face basically that you realize that you're in the toe don't worry you can't speak just watch and then, oh my God, then there's this thing. There was an earlier scene, guys, that I forgot to mention. They're walking at the beginning when they first got there. There was like this bear in a cage. And they're wondering, what's that bear doing in the cage? Boy, do we find out. They take her boyfriend after doing his act to capture him. While he's running away, wondering, what the hell did I just do? And he's coming to from all the drugs wearing off. He discovers all the people, his friends, missing from one guy's foot sticking out of the ground. One girl in the barnyard split open with chickens eating them. I'm like, are you fucking serious? Pardon the French. Like, wow. Like, I was totally, that's how they get you. The last 15 minutes, this is what goes down. So they end up getting him. They do whatever the hell to him. I don't know if they drug him up and he can't speak and shit. Then you see one scene as he's watching them go after the poor little bear. Rest your soul. Uh, they gut the bear. And you're like, why are they getting the bear? They took his intestines out. And this guy is teaching kids around the table. I'm like, now you're getting the creep meter is going up higher as we're going, right? I'm like, great. What the hell are they going to do with this guy? You know, I thought they were going to embalm him or something too. Nope. They put him inside the bear thing, sew him up, take him to this other triangle yellow thing that they're, they were forbidden from going. You don't go there at all. So they put him there. And then you see these people wheelbarrowing barrowing other people that are dead in these well barrels, putting them on stacks of hay inside this building, lining them all the way around. And I'm like, whoa. And then this one guy, I guess, who won the, I guess she get lottery thing to go and be sacrificed shit, which I was like, you serious? And you're supposed to be happy. So they gave him a drink. So he goes, don't worry, this is for your, uh, whatever the hell feeling. So you don't feel much. And it's going to make you pretty much numb to the situation and you will, you'll be okay. You're going to be okay. You're going to be burning to death. Anyways, so they put them all in this barn. They bring her out now. She's watching all this, okay? She, they put her boyfriend in this suit sitting in the middle. And what do they do? They light the whole damn place up and it burns down. And she's screaming internally. And I'm like, are you serious? And that's how it pretty much ends, guys. Her watching and, and then her, like a whole bunch of them, like chanting, pretend, making these weird dance moves or like chanting i don't know what the hell they were doing outside crying like they were getting burnt too meanwhile they ain't getting burnt the people inside that yellow pyramid are getting barbecued they're freaking out and it ends with her kind of like looking at them kind of like what the f pretty much wtf and then you see her look back at the thing and she starts to smile and that's the end of the film i'm like wow they all lost their freaking minds man but well, I'm getting chills by just mentioning that to you guys. But yeah, man, it's uh, one of those films that starts off slowly. Something shocking at the beginning and something shocking at the end. The director, uh, what's his name? Uh, Ari Aster did a phenomenal job. Beautiful scenery, uh, beautiful shots. You can see it from the uh, screen behind me there. 
done very well. The actors brought it, no matter how big or little their parts were. Even the ones that they meet there that are all weird. Even that creep friend. Holy shit, that scumbag. What's his name? Harper, I think his name is. But, uh, oh, my God. Like... Even him, he was just looking there, and they're looking at each other. Like, it, like it makes you uncomfortable, and that's what this did. And the last 15 minutes really grabs you. You went from, like, a slow, steady pace that you're slowly divulging all the information that's being fed your, your way to boom, boom, boom. Everybody dropping left, right, and center, being sacrificed, killed. You're like, holy shit. How worse could this get? And you're waiting and waiting and waiting because you know shit's going to go down like it always does. Typical movie. But it's done in a way that you... You know, like, you'll be interested in watching right till the end. Like, I was like, oh, no. Here we go. The first hour is kind of tough. The second hour, it picked up a lot. But you need the first hour to set up the second half of the movie. And, you know, like, it's good. Florence Pugh, phenomenal in this. Like, accent, don't even know she's from the UK. I'll tell you right now. But uh, good job. I liked it. So my overall final thoughts, watch the damn thing. I highly, well, I won't highly recommend it, but I recommend you checking it out anyways. For yourselves and then come back in the comment sections below uh don't ruin it for anybody just tell me if you liked it you didn't watch it you want to watch it do you even give a rat's butt let me know in the comment sections below and like always like share and subscribe check out my other content right here on the movie throne check out my other 3 to 31 reviews movie recommendations unboxing and new stuff that's coming down the road i promise you stuff is coming so uh i'll leave guys with stay off the king's throne and i'll see you soon with another Theater 31 review right here on YouTube. Take it easy.